Ukrainian officials say Russian forces are attempting to seize key highways and settlements held by Ukrainian troops. The assault comes after Ukraine launched counterattacks against Russian troops, taking back several villages and towns over the weekend. Let's bring in ABC News national security and defense analyst Mick Mulroy for more on that. Mick, how has Ukraine been able to retake this territory and how is Russia responding? So, Dan, I think it's a combination of several factors. One, they have the initiative, they have the motivation, and, and they are, they're, they're being met with success, and that, that actually adds a lot to it. The other part is the Russians essentially dug in and they've outrun their supply line. So they are not in the best position. But I think these counterattacks are significant because it shows that the Ukrainians can fight and win, not just defend. And it's putting the Russians on the defensive, which means they're not, they're getting further away from their goals of taking the entire country. And I think from the recent statements of President Putin, you're seeing a realization that that is in fact the case. Uh, one of the big things they took back recently is Irpin, which is an area right outside of Kyiv. It is a key area where they would have needed to hold, Russians would have needed to hold, to launch attack on Kyiv. So many of these areas and these actions have been very significant. So what impact has the new U.S. military aid had on the fighting so far? How much more are they set to receive, and what more do Ukrainian forces need at this point? So I think the first part is getting a lot more of what they've already had. They're going through uh, the missiles that come out of these javelin systems and stinger systems uh, very quickly. And so we need to make sure that our supply lines stay open and get them the weapons they need. Uh, these are taking out more tanks and more aircraft than any military analyst, I think, expected. But we're also introducing uh, things like the switchblade, which is a specific missile that was developed for our special operations forces and Marines. Uh, that is going to be very effective going after uh, artillery emplacement uh, and some of the some of the very things that are causing so much damage in these systems, in these cities. The other thing that we really need to get in there quickly uh, is the S-300 system, which is an anti-air, anti-missile uh, system that can essentially, if we get them enough of these systems, create a no-fly zone by the Ukrainians, and that is something that I think is really needed. Now, Ukraine's intelligence chief says Russia may be seeking to split the country in two in an attempt to create a sort of North and South Korea type scenario in Ukraine. How would Russia go about that, and how can Ukraine defend against it? So one of the things that's perplexed many that watched this invasion uh, is that Russia had essentially five or six objectives, and they never picked one main effort which essentially means they didn't accomplish any of them, uh, which is good, of course. Uh, but now they seem to recognize that they don't have the capacity to take the country, so they're focusing on areas that they've already have uh, some control and some support. They don't have much support in Ukraine, but they do have some support in these in these key areas like the Donbass. And I think this uh, this statement acknowledges that they are going to fail at their overall objective of taking the whole country of uh, Ukraine. But they think that they can at least reinforce what they've already done in the ball. And Zelensky says that his country is ready to compromise, but he says he wants meaningful security guarantees from Western countries. So do you see a potential agreement here? What could that look like? So I think uh, when it comes to membership in NATO, there's going to be a lot of pushback uh, to do that. Uh, from Ukraine's perspective, if they would have been in NATO already, they wouldn't be going through this right now. Uh, but there are other um, agreements that we come up with other countries that do provide security as assistance that doesn't go all the way up to a treated ally, as you'd say. You know, not, not getting the, type, the Article 5 protections of NATO. Uh, there's other um, lesser, um, you know, non, major non-NATO ally status. There's many other security um, protections that we could provide Ukraine that doesn't uh, re reach the level of being in NATO. And I think those are under consideration right now. Certainly, if it can either come to a stalled or frozen conflict or better yet, push Russia all the way out, there'll be a lot of discussion about what we can do to ensure that we don't allow Ukraine to look like a vulnerable target again in the future should Russia try to redo this, if they are, in fact, pushed out. All right, Mick Mulroy, always great to have your analysis. Mick, thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.